Hello YouTubers! So uh, today, I think it's uh, April 26th, 27th, we got snow today. And I guess we're getting 8 inches of snow. So, what a perfect time to start another project. So, um, this is going to be an extensive project. We have the complete uh, rear suspension, uh, basically all the arms, multiple control arms, as well as springs, and some miscellaneous bolts and stuff. And so, uh, bushings, bolts, some stuff is Nissan uh, parts purchased from the dealership. And uh, the arms are a little bit cheaper to buy this uh, aftermarket stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, lift the vehicle and put our jack stands just to prep. And then we'll kind of review um, what is going to end up happening for this. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. Um, so what do we have going on here? Well, we have uh, the vehicle, one side of the vehicle up with a uh, three-ton uh, jack and three-ton jack stand. So we have a, uh, a lot of parts to swap out. So I'm going to Continue with some PD blast because I'm assuming a lot of these bolts are going to need to be cut, which is going to be quite a pain. But we have our uh, upper control arm here. We got uh, the bolts holding that in there. We have a uh, new shock. Um, we're not doing air shocks. This was originally airbag uh, with a compressor back here, so I'm not going to be doing that yet, maybe in the future. Um, we have our lower control arm here, so both sides of that. We have our connecting uh, rod here uh, for the sway bar or stabilizer bar. Uh, on this side, we have a, another lower control arm for the spring, so both sides there. Um, the spring itself we'll be replacing. We have our new brakes, so rotor and pads. Uh, these pads still got some uh, time left on them, but we're going to replace them anyway. Okay, so the assumption is a lot of these bolts are going to need to be cut. So I ended up purchasing some special blades to hopefully cut through this faster. Um, but essentially, I'm going to PB blast everything again and let it sit for a little bit before we start to try to remove anything on this build. So uh, I'm going to start with that first. We'll just PB blast everything. Okay, so the first thing I did here is I went ahead and just loosened the strut or the shock absorber. Uh, there's one bolt at the bottom, one bolt at the top. This is 19 millimeter socket for those. And then on the back of our brake caliper, we have 10 millimeter. Um, so we're going to go ahead and remove these. And then we're going to secure this uh, brake caliper out of the way using some wire. Alright, so we're basically just going to wire it out of the way. It looks like this is a good spot for it. I just fished the wire through here, and I'm just going to hang the brake caliper there. I'm probably going to have to uh, use a screwdriver to get this thing out, because it's all pretty much rusted. Ok, 
Okay, it was a pain to get that uh, brake off, and it turns out uh, the calipers broke. So I'll end up having to purchase a new one. Um, I'll have to see what the prices are as far as putting a new caliper in or buying a whole assembly. Um, but we have that off now, off to the side. Another thing I noticed was if we look at uh, these rear brakes, it's discs with drums, and there's really nothing here. It's probably had no pad forever on the inside here. So we'll want to get pads for the inside as well. Uh, we also just removed our shock absorber. So that was the aftermarket Ranchero that was on here when I purchased it. So it basically comes out of here and up here. Okay, so now we're going to attempt to start working on these control arms. Um, we'll let uh, some tension off so that we could pull this spring out as well. So I'm going to see if we can uh, work at these at all. It's very difficult spacing in here for something that's going to be completely rusted. So. I'm just going to keep spraying with the PB Blast, and then uh, by the time I get to uh, loosening those, hopefully they come out. So we'll give it a try. I'm going to keep working at it. Okay, I'm working on the pinch bolt that is on this ball joint. So I essentially have a 19 uh, millimeter socket on the nut side, and then this is an 18 millimeter on the bolt side and it is the wrench is lodged up against the control arm to allow me some leverage and it's starting to come loose so Lots of rust. So we're going to keep working at it until we get that out. Um, we'll probably leave the bolt in for the time being. And we'll work on loosening some other bolts. Because um, eventually we're going to need to put some support on here for the drive shaft. Um, but we're not quite there yet. So I'll keep working at it and give you an update on the next steps. All right, we got the uh, top one. Uh, this uh, nut has been removed. Now we're going to work on the bottom pinch bolt. And this one uh, is pretty easy. So this guy's off now as well. So essentially we got these two pinch joints out. Um, we're almost at the point where we're going to want to put a jack stand under here, but I want to see if I can loosen some of these other control arm bolts. Um, these are the ones I'm concerned about that are going to need to be cut because they're just so uh, rusted. So we'll see if we can get in here and maybe loosen that guy. Um, more than likely it's just going to be seized in here, but maybe we'll be lucky and we'll be able to get it out. So I'm going to work at those, see where I can get all right, so I'm not having much luck with these uh, rusted up bolts. So I have a jack underneath the spring arm here for the tension. I'm going to get ready to start cutting these bolts if I can. We're going to give it a try. Okay, we got the first bolt cut through coming in on the bottom like this. This blade is really, really good. So this guy is uh, coming right off. There we go. So now the question is, can I punch that through? I doubt it. I'm going to probably have to cut it on the other side also. I have a jack under here for the spring tension. Hey, it's coming through. That's a 
broke my screwdriver. So this guy is running into the bottom portion of the hub assembly here, so we're not going to be able to push it through that way. So thinking we'll just have to cut that side also. spring. Since we cut this, we have a new bushing to put in there. So we're going to have to figure out how to get this bushing out. So now we're going to have to get the other side of this arm off. Okay, we're gonna have to push this bushing out. Probably use a vice grip or clamp and just kind of press it through. I'll have to figure out what side it needs to come out on. And then back here, we were able to get the adjustment uh, nut off. Um, this bolt is kind of seized in here. We're gonna see if we could spray inside there and pound it out. Um, I'm going to need to disconnect this, however it's attached. This is for the uh, airbags in the back. The uh, shocks that came factory installed on this uh, were essentially air shocks. And this was kind of the mechanism to turn on the pump, uh, the compressor here, to put air into the shocks. If this... Uh, came up too high, it would know that it was low and it would turn the pump on. So I have to disconnect this so we don't break it. Um, and then we just got to see if we can get that bolt out and then this piece will be done. Okay, this bottom one is uh, seized in the bushing as well. I was able to get the adjustment uh, nut off as I indicated, but this side I just can't get out. And if I try to uh, loosen or tighten, the whole bushing assembly moves. So um, there may be ways to, you know, kind of punch it out, um, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. So I have a little bit of a gap on this side I'm going to have to cut here, and then I have a gap to access the bolt here, so I'm going to cut it out completely. Um, we're going to get a wire brush and like uh, clean all this up on this side when we're done too. And then we'll probably uh, put some type of sealant, the uh, rubberized uh, uh, rust proof stuff on here or uh, just prime it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out and then we'll come back. Okay, so an update on our status. Um, we were able to cut this bolt out completely. So uh, that piece is now uh, removed. 
Now uh, we started on the upper, on this side here. Uh, so essentially, the uh, bolt was on this side, so I was able to cut just this, and uh, it was not seized. So that uh, bolt came out, I didn't have to cut it twice. And same for this other side. This other side, I was able to cut it in through here, down, and took the uh, nut side off. And uh, same thing, it is not seized, so uh, both of these can come out now. So this is all uh, taken off. I removed my pinch bolt, so the pinch bolt is out. So the pinch bolt was in here, and uh, I can pound this up to remove it. So. Um, I want to work on the lower a bit here first before I take this off because this whole uh, assembly is going to need to be supported uh, for the drive shaft. Um, so I'm going to keep working at it. All right, uh, so we got a little bit further here. So the uh, lower down over here cut that bolt. So we have one bolt left uh, on this side, right down here that we have to get, and then the lower will be removed. I went ahead and used a hammer and disconnected our pinch joint to the ball, our little ball joint here. So I can uh, remove this upper now, and I will secure this. The, there's a jack underneath holding this in place, the uh, knuckle, to the lower currently. So we're removing the cut bolts from this upper. And there's the upper. Ugh. So now we have access to uh, this connecting rod and hopefully we'll have access to cut that bolt down there. So I'm going to wire this knuckle up here just to again keep it so that it doesn't go too far. Uh, maybe I'll do it up here because we don't want this to drop. All right, we're just going to run a wire through where the bolt goes. So we got that tied down, so it's not going to go too far. All right, we need to work on that uh, bolt down here for the lower so that we can get that out. So uh, I'm going to see if I can uh, find a way to uh, get a good angle to cut that. I may need to go underneath the vehicle, which I want to avoid. Welcome back. So uh, essentially, my favorite word, we have cut off everything and took a long break. Uh, so what do we have here? <clears throat> well, as you can see, pretty much all the control arms have been removed. We still have the lower. I did cut over here and uh, it broke loose so uh, that one is good and then uh, this one we had to cut both sides so that there's nothing supporting it there at the moment 
And then I also had to cut off this guy here because uh, this was completely seized. I couldn't get it off. So I cut this guy off. Um, so uh, next step is we're going to end up needing to take off this bearing. This wheel hub assembly is being replaced as well and it needs to come off in order to get off the lower. Uh, we need to get this bolt off. So doing this by hand with a wrench is nearly impossible. So uh, we're going to bring a friend in. So 32 millimeter socket. And our oversized air ratchet. This seems to do the trick. Okay, we finally got it off using that impact wrench. The new um, purchased bearings have uh, new nuts, so these should be replaced. I'm not sure what this goop is. It must be the bearing grease coming out. So we have this cable attached to the knuckle up here. Let's take a quick look at that. As you can see, this knuckle has this hose here. And my only guess of what it is is the parking brake. So I'm assuming there is a cable inside there. And it is not... Um, uh, brake fluid, at least I hope it is not. I'll have to uh, look it up here to see if I'm going to make a mess, but I'm going to have to pull this bolt off to remove this assembly, and hopefully it doesn't create a mess everywhere. So um, that's where we're at right now. We can uh, push the shaft through and pull the knuckle down and uh, detach the knuckle from the bottom um, ball joint. Um, we'll probably have to use a jack to push a socket up through the bottom. That's what I did last time. And it pushes pressure to the bottom of the ball joint piece itself. And while that's being pushed up, I can kind of hammer downward on the... Um, Uh, it doesn't look like the knuckle is going to... We probably don't want to hit this knuckle. This knuckle is pretty thin. I'd probably break it if I were to beat on this. So we're going to try not to beat on this at all and just pull it all off. And then tomorrow I'm going to purchase parts for the parking brake because this just is nothing. I don't know what happened here. There was just no pad whatsoever. Uh, as well as some other pieces such as the piston that's... Uh, broke off here. Hopefully uh, the other side's okay, um, but we'll see. Okay, so this is where I'm at. Um, as I progress, I'll probably be done for tonight, and I will hit it back up in the morning. Okay, here we are on day two. Here's the update. Um, <clears throat> so we have the upper removed from here. <clears throat> Additionally, we have the uh, uh, spring shock uh, lower removed as well. And then uh, we got both of the bolts cut, so this lower is ready to go. However, we have a pinch bolt here that we need to address. Um, we're going to just put something in here and pound it upward, 
and to pound uh, pound this guy out. That way I don't need to use my pickle fork, or, well, I don't have a pickle fork, but that's how I would have to do it, is with a pickle fork. Um, and once I pop that bottom out, um, I have to get this uh, bearing off as well. And on the back here, we have uh, four different uh, nuts that hold it in place, or bolts. And then I'm going to have to uh, disconnect uh, the parking brake cable to uh, get this off. Um, so I'm going to work on that. We're going to get this bearing off, removing those four bolts and uh, uh, trying to pound it out. And then uh, we're going to remove this lower. So those are my two next steps. Okay, so for this parking brake that I'm going to replace, um, there's a spring at the top and there's a spring at the bottom. And I'm, from what I understand, there's a special tool to remove these. Um, since I bought the spring kit, I don't, I didn't really care if the spring broke. It's, it looks like it did not break. But in any case, I just put a screwdriver over the top and hit it with a hammer and just popped it out on the top and the bottom. And then uh, there's these little clips here on the side that you essentially need to hold straight because it goes through the back of this plate. You hold straight, push a screwdriver in here, and then push this down to pop it out. So the other side was a little bit easier to do. If you're not pushing it in from the back, the whole thing kind of pushes itself in. So this clip pops out, and then this pin kind of goes through all the way. Kind of looks like this. These have no brake shoe on it at all, but there's a $9 core return for these, so I'm going to return those. There's the other spring. So. Pretty well rusted. And then this is the brake cable. So I'm hoping there's a way for me to disconnect this. So I can remove it. Okay, so it looks like it flips open on this back end. There's like a hook in there, just like this. So it basically just hooks in there. So now I can remove this entire knuckle with the bearing so that I can get this bearing off. And I've already removed the lower. So I'm going to take off all these wires I'm using to hold it in place. And I wired up the drive shaft separately. Back here, I have it wired up to the top to hold it in place. I'm 
And then we'll get this wire off so we don't poke ourselves in the face. Now we should be able to just pull this out. Looks like it's crimped on this end, so I may have to remove this bolt that's on the top. I already had loosened it previously. Let's see if this thing comes off. Let's see how are we gonna do this. Okay, so this is where the brake cable, the parking brake cable is. And this was the bolt I took off. So I'm hoping this piece pops off. Looks like it does. So there we go, there's our parking brake cable. So now, the whole knuckle with the bearing comes off. Gonna get some things out of the way here. So here is our knuckle. We got to get this bushing out because we have a replacement for it. So again I have to figure out if it pounds out this way or pounds through this way. Uh, we'll find that out shortly. And now uh, we're gonna remove the bolts on the back of the knuckle. Let's see what we need for that. I believe 15 millimeter is what we had and that looks correct. Okay, so we're gonna use our, uh, let's see if we have uh, the right size for it to use our air ratchet because that will keep it, keep it from moving. We just have to pound this out of the knuckle. So that may be a bit of a pain to do, but we're going to give it a try. Let me save these bolts. Oh, nice and easy. Very nice and easy. 
All right, so this is our old bearing. This is the uh, anti-lock brake connector. So we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, so this plate is pretty well rusted. I'm gonna grind it down and I bought some paint. So I'm gonna paint it so that we can get some longevity out of this. Otherwise, I gotta buy a new one. But it's still in pretty decent shape. So let me grind this down and then we'll go ahead and paint it. And then we'll put this all back together. Okay guys, it's been uh, about two days since I last worked on this project. And I got two big issues that I uh, need to resolve. So this is the driver's side knuckle. And I still cannot get this bushing out. So uh, I saw some videos online of trying, uh, you know, using some uh, gas pipe that's bigger than one side and a socket that's smaller on the other. And then uh, running a bolt through, a long bolt such as this. And then keep tightening it until it pops out. Um, it wasn't working for this, and this very strong uh, grade 8 bolt, the nut on it started uh, to shear. So I'm going to have to probably take this in. I don't have a press, so I'm going to have to probably take these in to get them pressed out with the new ones pressed in. So that's my first problem. So my second problem is... This is the passenger side, and on the passenger side, both knuckles appear to be seized, and I cannot get these bolts out. So I essentially just cut off the bolts of the control arms and remove the whole thing as one piece. And I'm going to try to pound the crap out of these to get them out. Um, I even attempted to use my super air ratchet hammer and it couldn't do it either so it started actually stripping one of the bolts so both sides are just super stuck so I'm gonna just really pound at these and see if I can get them to, to pop out all right we're gonna deal with this uh, bushing this is on the passenger side uh, we still have to remove it so uh, the way I attempted to remove it on the last one was I had this uh, gear puller. I hooked it up and I pushed and pushed and pushed and it just wouldn't budge. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill out the rubber piece to weaken it so that we could push it out. So I'm just going to get my drill. We'll throw a bit on there. I think this one's a little bit bigger. Just push it through. So 
So that is removed. Now we need to just get rid of this part, which requires a air hammer. All right, I'm gonna cut a groove. So we're gonna keep uh, working at creating a groove right in here. And once I get it deep enough, I'm gonna go ahead and try to peel back this metal. So I'm gonna work at shaving this down a bit. It'll probably be about five minutes. All right, so we essentially got a groove going. So we're almost all the way through on this groove that we cut all the way from front to back. Now we're going to try to peel this away. Alright, I started on the bottom now, and now it looks like it's going to be working. And there we go. Uh, this was the old one. Yeah, here's the new one, or the one I just recently did. So quite a bit of ripping it up to get it out. And then uh, you're going to have some gouges and stuff on the inside. So we'll have to sand that down. Throw some sandpaper in there. And try to smooth it out a bit before we press the new one in. So let me do that. Okay. We have our new part. Our new uh, sleeve pushing. Okay, I'm going to want to uh, grate, grease this up a bit. And then grease up the inside of this. Okay, so hopefully that allows it to go in easier. Now um, we don't have a press, so we're going to use a trick that many other people demonstrate on YouTube. And we're going to uh, assemble kind of a press here. First thing we need is a socket that can fit on the top of that. And I found this Master Force 29 millimeter socket and we need a uh, a good strong class 8 bolt and we need to get some type of shallow strong metal like this uh, iron cast iron uh, gas pipe and we're essentially going to take this assembly put it on the top and then, if we're lucky, our bottom will fit, but in this case the bottom is not going to fit. So we're going to have to push it in a bit first before we can utilize this bottom. So I'm going to go with a smaller socket initially just to get it started. So that's my finisher socket. I have a uh, 27 millimeter. Um, smaller one and we're going to start off with that guy um. 
hopefully that is going to work for us. Looks like it will. No, not quite there yet. So, I believe I started off with this part of the gas pipe. Mm. Or, no, I, I'm sorry, I used my old uh, bolt, or the old nut for the um, wheel bearing, wheel bearing assembly. Again, it's just enough to get it started. We'll have to uh, keep changing and adjusting things to make it continue to go into here. Okay, once we get it all lined up, we're going to tighten the top and the bottom simultaneously, and it will start to press. Okay, we need our wrench for the bottom. I always lose everything like my mind. Okay, if we're holding that in place, then we can tighten. Looks like we're pretty well aligned. Take this bolt off. I keep calling them a bolt, it's a nut. So this large nut is now going to be replaced because now I have more room. for round two. Put our heavy duty guy on there. is a little bit bigger, so we only need the one washer for now. Alright, this is probably going to be all we need to keep doing. So we get it all the way in.
There we go. We're all pushed in. Without a press. Ta-da! There we go. Ready to rumble. Now, we need to get this stupid bolt off that's stuck in here forever. Well, so this uh, pinch bolt, nothing I could do to get this thing out. Hammer drill, um, the giant three-quarter inch uh, air drill, air ratchet, nothing to get it out. So essentially, I took my sawzall and I cut on the inside and I cut all the way through and cut this stupid thing off. So now I have room to put a... Um, wheel puller on here so it's essentially kind of like uh, what we did to press out and press in these uh, bushings so I'm gonna basically push on this and push it through hopefully I couldn't attach anything before because of the lower but now uh, we're gonna attach this on there and see if we can pop it out man that was a giant pain all right, guys, I got this bolt I just cannot get out uh, from this pinch joint. It is uh, pretty well seized in there. Um, I'm going to try to torch it using what gas I have. And see if we can uh, get this thing loose. So we have success. We really torched that bolt for, I don't know, maybe five straight minutes, six straight minutes, and then waited till I start seeing some smoke and stuff from all the flakies of rust. And then I basically pounded that through. So we're going to see if we can get that ball joint out now. And then we're ready to uh, reinsert this when it cools off. <laughs> 